Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome back to another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be covering how to use the fishing content from Anniversary Edition to create your own fishing plaques. So I did do a video prior to this one as well uh, that covered the fish aquariums, if you want to go ahead and check that out at the top. Otherwise, we'll be focusing on the fishing plaques just for today. So let's dive into it. Before I get started into showing you how to create these plaques, there are going to be some requirements here. So number one is that you are going to need the Skyrim Special Edition Anniversary Edition of Skyrim or the fishing content from the Creation Club. This will of course add a hard requirement on your own mod as well for this content. So if you don't like that idea but you would like to use this content, I would recommend using my video at the top there to make a sort of patch slash add-on uh, ESP or ESL. Uh, which would be really handy. Uh, so that means that you could have your base content for your main mod and then you could just have an add-on that adds this stuff over the top for those that do have anniversary fishing content or anything else that you want to use. Now the second requirement is that you will need access to the scripts, so the PEX files specifically, from the phishing BSA for the phishing content. So if you go to your main directory and data you should have the phishing BSA here cc bg ssse 001-fish.bsa. This will need to be extracted using a tool such as the BSA browser. I've got a video on that as well if you want if you want to check that out and see how that's done. Otherwise use any method you like. Mod Organizer 2 can even extract things. Um, do which method you need and just make sure you've got access to the scripts. So what I've done is go ahead and put a temporary folder on my desktop here and this includes all of the PEX files from this DLC. Something that's worth noting is that they do not seem to include the source files like they do with the base game and other DLCs. I'm not sure why uh, but you can decompile those if you wanted to. We don't actually need to today. We just need to reference those scripts to add them onto things. So what you can do is take all of this and you could add this into a zip and add it to Mod Organizer. That's if you mod through Mod Organizer using the Creation Kit. If you're like me and you're a little bit more old fashioned with this stuff, uh, you can place it loose into your data folder and the Creation Kit can pick it up that way. So that's what I prefer to do. I'm going to go ahead and make sure these scripts are available to me under Data, Scripts and paste them in there. Looks like it's going to overwrite some. Not sure why. There we go. And once you've got all of that in place, we can get started. Okay, so here I am in the 64-bit creation kit and I have gone into the Falkreath basement, one of the build-your-own homes, uh, the Hearthfire homes. And in the basement, you'll see that they've got the fish aquariums and they also have the fish plaques. Now, in the aquariums video, I did give the option where you can just copy and paste and it, for the most part, pretty much works with the uh, sort of exception of some enable markers and whatnot. However, in this case, it links with quests or a quest that you have to make and some aliases. So a copy and paste method, although it would get you most of the way there, it could then have issues where certain properties are linked to the wrong things and it could just all get crisscrossed and not work very well. But as you'll see, what you've got is you've got these two plaques here and then sort of a third plaque on the top and you've got a marker for each different fish size. So there are three markers there. If you double tap one, you can hide these. So you've got three markers. You've got each of the physical sort of visible plaques. You've got this little activator trigger. And then you've also got these controller X markers that are holding scripts that do some wizardry uh, with some links back and forth. So uh, this is going to be quite a confusing uh, kind of linking of, of different references and whatnot. Uh, it's a bit weird, but... Uh, we have tested this in a live stream and made sure that all of this does hook together and then work. So uh, let's go ahead and do the first step, which is to just create a quest. Okay, so I've created myself a test cell um, just so I can display this stuff. But first, I'm going to need a quest. So if I go under character and quest, we can actually type in the filter fish. And what you'll see is the various quests here the one that you you want to take a quick look at uh, well you don't need to we're just going to recreate this essentially but i'll i'll show you what it's like is the fish plaque quest and if you go into here this has aliases for essentially every single plaque for every single house so each house has nine plaques and there are three houses so 
there's a hell of a lot of plaques there. We're only going to do three plaques, so we're just going to copy sort of one section um, from the DLC. So we won't need that many. And then it's just got some basic data, and that's pretty much it. So we just need to go ahead and recreate that. We need our own quest to govern our own house, uh, just so that it doesn't edit and interfere with the vanilla stuff. So right click and new, and I'm going to give this a name. So it's going to be DF Fish Quest. And I'm just going to call it Fish Quest. Doesn't really matter what I really call it, to be honest. And the type as none, the priority as zero, the event as zero, and start game enable and run once need to be ticked. And then once you've got that, tick OK. Open it back up. And the reason that we've done that is that it now provides you with a lot more options on here. So one of those being quest aliases. And what we need to do is add an alias for every single plaque. So if you've got five plaques, add five aliases, one for each. Uh, we're going to do three, so I'll line three up here. So if I just call this fish plaque zero one, oh, can't type, there we go, fish plaque zero one. Just going to copy that. And I'm going to do the fill type as specific reference, but I'm not going to select one. It's going to be blank. And because we're having a blank reference, you need to tick the optional flag. Otherwise, that can cause crashing. So if ever you've got an empty uh, specified reference, you need to put optional because it means that it doesn't have to be filled. But if the game thinks that it does and there's nothing in it, it freaks out and it dies. So pretty important. The other thing is we need to click on the scripts here and click on add. Give it a few seconds. You might get a warning as well about scripts. If you do, you can just click yes to all. Uh, my box has just appeared on my second monitor uh, for some reason. I didn't get an error, but you might do. And then you don't want a new script. You want to type in fish into the filter and there will be a fish plaque alias script. And that's the one that we need to add. If you double click on here, you'll see this doesn't have any properties. So there's nothing that we need to fill in. It is just an alias script that sits there and does its thing going to do OK. What we can actually do is right click and duplicate. And if we just do that a couple of times, so however many times for your plaques, and then what we'll do instead is we'll rename them. This means that all of the other flags and whatnot and references and the script are already on there. And then we can just change the names and it saves having to redo that too many times. Click OK. I'm just going to go ahead and save that and move on to the next step. Okay, now that we've got our quest in place, we can go ahead and start creating the plaques themselves. So if I just type in fish in the filter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create three plaques pretty much in the same way that Bethesda have done it uh, in the DLC. However, you can do as many plaques as you like, arrange them however you like. It really doesn't matter as long as you follow the rules with all the markers and whatnot and have everything linked correctly. It's perfectly fine. So what I need to do is go under world objects and static. And the first thing that we want to do is just put our static items in for the plaques themselves. So if you type in fish and look under CC, uh, you'll see one of these or multiple of these will be for fish plaque. So we've got a driftwood one. So if we just go into the preview, that's the one that you, you tend to put at the top. You've got large ones and you've got short ones. So whichever ones that you want to use. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and use the driftwood. So I'm just going to place this into the world, rotate it around a bit, and I'm just going to have these large ones as well. You have to bear with me. Things might be a bit all over the place as I don't quite have the sensitivity settings right yet on this creation kit. I do on my main machine, but not on this one. And I'm just going to have a little bit of distance between these, so I'm going to position these however I like. Uh, something to note as well, the collision of the wall, depending on the wall that you're using, the collision may come out quite a bit. So you may want to make sure that if the statics at least aren't pulled away from the wall slightly, that when we start adding the activator trigger boxes, that they are pulled away from the wall. So something that you can do is hit F4 and you'll be able to lightly see these black lines um, that sort of signify where the collision is. Now the wall that I'm using here, the collision is pretty flat to the wall, which is perfect. But if you've got some where the collision comes out, like I say, it could interfere with things. So just be aware of that when you are putting things in, especially the triggers, activators, things like that. 
So now that I've got my static items, I do have a big list on my other monitor because this gets very confusing and I'm going to have to just follow some, some steps so that we don't end up doing it wrong. So something to note here is before we carry on, we are going to be enable parenting a lot of these objects to a, a sort of standard object. So one main object, and that is going to be this plaque. The reason that this is done in the fishing DLC is so that it links with Hearthfire. Uh, Hearthfire has you build up your home, therefore this stuff doesn't need to be visible to begin with, and then you would craft it on a bench, and then it would become visible. So what they do is they have this set as initially disabled, or whichever one you class as your main plaque, uh, and what you're linking everything else to, could be an X marker, uh, and then everything else enable parents. So what I would recommend in this video, even if you are not going to have a player home craftable system, follow the steps of the enable parenting just in case okay now if you are planning on having a player home system and you want all this to be invisible to begin with and not present then make sure that you tick initially disabled for what you consider your main plaque that you will refer to this will be the object that you enable with your crafting system so if you do want a video on a crafting system i've got a free resource for a really good crafting system video at the top there if you want to see that and so if you were going to use that sort of system, tick initially disabled. If you want this to be visible from the off and you don't need to craft anything, don't have that ticked. Otherwise, from this point on, just copy what I'm doing regardless. So now what we need to do is hold down control, select both of these, hit the dash button on the keyboard. This brings up the batch menu. Click on set enable parent. Click on select reference in render window. And we want to double click on the driftwood here. Now, for some reason, that's not allowing me to do it. So sometimes if something doesn't have a reference ID, it doesn't allow you to link things to it. Now, not just for that reason, but also because we're going to be selecting this stuff and linking things together. It is actually good practice to give a reference to almost everything that you put into the creation kit that is going to have some sort of link to it. So what we'll do here is under the reference editor ID, We'll type in df ref, you can type whatever you want, fish plaque 01. And then I'm going to go ahead and name the other two as well. So I'll copy this to make it quicker. Double click on these and I'm going to give each of these a name. This one's going to be two and this one's going to be three. And then what happens is when we do select both of these, go into the batch menu, we can double click to select that. Oops, messed that up then. Too many clicks. Select the reference, double click that, make sure they're both selected and they're set to that main reference. Enable parent, click do. That will link them to that and you should see a very light kind of green arrow. It's very difficult to see, uh, but that means that they, uh, they are correctly linked. So that links those up. And now we're going to need some activators. So the activators are what you're actually going to be able to hover over and get that sort of prompt to activate a fish plaque. So in order to put activators in, they're essentially going to be trigger boxes set to player activatable. Now, when you put trigger boxes in and to go over something to select a particular static object, a good idea is to click and select that object and then tick the box up here. Click on the T in the small box that will go to create a trigger box. Now don't make a new one. We want to actually use the template from Bethesda as it's got the script we need on it already. And we're just gonna type in fish into the filter. Go down to where you've got all these CCs for the CC content. And you are looking for, you can expand this out a little bit if you like. And what you are looking for is the fish plaque player act for player activator. And you wanna click okay. And what that will do is it will place a trigger box around that object. You can see it's it's red there. It's not really in a good position. And again, what I said about the collision on the walls, you'll want to pull this away a little bit and have it activatable. So make sure that your gizmos are on. Something to note is because I've got the preview window open, gizmos can act very strange with preview windows open. So just close your preview window. And then make sure you've got your gizmo. If your gizmo is not showing or you've got the wrong gizmo, you can hit two on the keyboard and that will bring the gizmo up. And then you can drag this out a little bit so that it's gonna be activatable and position it pretty much however you like. Something to note about trigger boxes is that they can tend to be um, 
activatable far more out, outside of their, their actual radius. So this can actually be a lot smaller than it needs to be. And you'll still be able to activate it mostly around here. So just double click on your trigger box when you've got it the size that you want. Click on the primitive tab and a very useful thing to do when you're dealing with a lot of different trigger boxes maybe in a cell is just to colour code them. It doesn't functionally do anything but it does make them easy to spot for what their functions are for. So because this is to do with fishing I'm going to do it water blue and that will change the colour of the trigger box. Click OK you'll see it's changed to blue. Very easily recognisable so I know it's to do with this system. And then also under the primitive tab you want to click player activation. If you don't do that these are not going to work. And if you go into 3D data something that I've mentioned in my weapon plaques um, and weapon racks tutorial that's up top there as well if you want to see that. Um, these can be very buggy uh, trigger boxes and if they don't work when you go in you can't activate them you can't see them or anything so you hover over there and you don't get a prompt it could well be that you're getting the trigger box bug and you just need to rotate these off by one or two so point one for example uh, should do it on the, each of these axes i think this is going to be fine so i'm going to leave it but it's just something to be aware of if you do experiencing is experience issues with the prompt appearing then just tweak these values ever so slightly to try and uh, account for that bug and then click OK. So obviously one's not enough we need one for each of our plaques so I'm going to turn the gizmo off using the two key click on it again Control and D to duplicate hold down X in this case or whichever axes I need you can use Z X and C for your gizmo axes and I'm just going to move this along you can control uh, this with Control and Q and Q to change your snaps or click these options up here if you want to do it loosely or snap it straight to the grid as I have. And I do want to just move these ever so slightly so this one's coming out a little bit too much. So I'm going to go ahead and push this thing back. Again these aren't really going to be perfect in the video but you may want to get them lined up a lot nicer. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this one and also move this up and move it along. So that will cover that one. And then again, I'm going to want to give these references. So DF ref fish act 01, just so it makes it easy to make sure I'm selecting the right thing. Give them all of their relevant names here, which is quite nice. Just check my notes here. Uh, yep, we also want to click on each of these and set them as enable parents to your, your main object. So set enable parent, select reference in render window. Double click on that big piece of wood there and click on do. And again, you'll get those light green arrows if you can see them. And we also need to get these linked to the controllers, but we don't yet have them. So we're going to go ahead and create the controllers next. So the controllers are essentially X markers that we can place down. So if I just type in X marker here, just drag and drop some X markers in. You're going to need one of them to begin with. And what you want to do is make sure that these are out the way in the void because they're just going to contain a script that allows us to link to and control our plaques. So I'll put one in to begin with and I'll, I'll put it as the main one behind here. I'm just going to double click on it. I'm going to give this a name DF ref fish controller 01. And then I'm going to take that name. Actually, what I'll do is I'll also add the script. What this is going to need is it needs a script added to it. So if you go under the scripts tab and click add, you may or may not get an error when you do this. If you get an error, just ignore it. Yes to all. And we don't want a new script. We want to type in fish and we are going to need the main script for plaque. So it's going to be the CCBGSSS E blah, 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 fish plaque script. That's the one that you want to add. And you don't want to add it to the base object or that would put it on every X marker in the game. Just do it on the reference. Double click on it and now we get something interesting. We get a bunch of properties that need to be filled in. So most of these are form lists and keywords that will autofill. So if you click on autofill all, it will fill in nine properties. And then we have a container and a fish alias. This is where it gets really interesting. The container is a naked Nord. So if you go into the triple A markers, and this was not by my choice, this is Bethesda's weirdness again. Uh, if you go into here, 
and look around, there will be a naked Nord in the AAA markers. What we need to do is just copy this Nord and have our own one just to keep it separate completely from any Hearthfire systems. Drag him over. You can put him in your own cell if you want. In fact, I'd probably recommend this if you're doing this for your own mod. And I'm going to call him DFREF Naked Fisherman. And somehow this guy controls the fish. I don't know. Don't don't ask. It, it's a thing. Uh, he should also have a script on him, I believe. You can you can leave that. Doesn't need anything filling in. Make sure you've got your own fisherman, and then you can go right back to your cell. In my case, it's just my test cell. You don't need to have that cell loaded. Once you've got him, what we can do is go back to the properties here and click on edit value. Type in the cell name that your naked man is sitting in and then click on reference. And because we've given him a reference, he's easy to spot. Click on DF ref naked fisherman. And then the alias, these are going to link up to the aliases that you've placed in your quest at the start of the video. So I'm going to type in the name of my quest and then I'm going to fill in the first alias and you're going to select an alias for each one of these. So you can have a dedicated alias in the property for each fish controller for each weapon plaque. So I'm just going to go over here and what I want to do is duplicate this X marker so we get most of that copied. I'm going to duplicate it again and I'm just going to rename it. So this one is going to be number two. And this one is going to be number three. And as you may have guessed, I'm going to go into the scripts for each of those two new ones. And I'm just going to change to plaque two for the alias and plaque three for the alias, because each of them are having their own alias to keep hold of what fish is supposed to be on the plaque at any given time. So now that we've actually got those controllers, we can just quickly come back to our activators. These activators need to have a linked ref over to the controller. So if you click on each of these and you go to link reference, double click in the box, select reference in render window, and then double click on the adjacent X marker. It doesn't need a keyword in this case. And you just need to link these to each of the markers. So again, select that reference, no keyword and a link ref for number three as well, without a keyword to the third one. And that's pretty much all that you need to do with your activators, all that you need to do with your statics. And all we need to do now is, I think there's some extra stuff with those plaque controllers. Let's just double check the notes so that we don't get this wrong. Uh, so we've got our script on there with our properties filled. We've got our naked man. Uh, and then we've got, <laughs> And then we've got uh, link references. So now these need to link ref to some other stuff, but we can't quite do that just yet. So what we need to do is we need to get down some markers for where the fish go. So if you remember when we looked at the other cell uh, where Hearthfire had it set up, they had three markers for each plaque that judge the different size of fish. So when it places the fish in the world, depending on their size, they're going to need to be pulled slightly more away from the wall. Therefore, you need a marker for each one of them. So again, we're going to use X markers. That's just what the game uses. Drag and drop that in. And we're going to try and rotate these around to a certain position. You may need to play with these quite a bit to get the positioning just right. It's going to be a lot of in and out of game, trial and error. But you'll want to not put them into position straight away. You want to keep them sort of away from everything because we're going to do some link references and it's going to be harder if they're all bundled together from the off. So go ahead and get three together and pull all three away from each other. And then what you want to do is give them some references as well. So DF ref fish uh, spot because it's a spot you're going to put a fish down. <laughs> Uh, and then we'll do zero one. Uh, you can do um, actually not zero one. Let's let's call them by name. So we'll do small. I'll just copy that. Uh, what we also want actually, you do want zero one because we've got different numbers of numbers of plaques. But it'll be zero two for this. So this is the fish spot for plaque two, the small one. And then what we'll do is we will give these similar names. But this one will be large, and then you'll have one for extra large. Hopefully that makes sense. So 
So it's just making them much easier to recognize. So X large for the extra large. And then you've probably guessed it. I'm going to grab these, duplicate them, and I'm just going to nudge them over for the next one. And I'm just going to slightly rename them. So I'm going to change the two to a three for each of these. And this is just going to keep it really organized and really easy to do. And again, I'm going to go and select these and I'm going to need one for the top as well. Once I've figured out how to move that into position exactly how I need it. So again, th this positioning isn't really perfect, but it doesn't need to be for this video. But you will probably want to get these positioned quite nicely afterwards anyway. And then again, we're going to change the names. So these are going to be ones now instead of twos. There we go. Very time consuming, very fiddly, very convoluted, but we'll get there. So once you've got your markers in place, we essentially need to ensure that these are also enable parented. So holding down control and clicking on each of them, hitting the dash button on the keyboard for the batch menu, select enable parent, select reference in window, select our main object and click do to link. And that should be those set and ready to go for each plaque. Now what we need to do is go to our plaque controllers. We're nearly there, bear with me. <laughs> go back to our plaque controllers and we need to also have links from these to each of these markers, which can be quite painful. So they're going to need to link to the main plaque. So if I do the first one and then I can just run off and do the other two, and I do a link reference from the main, like the first fish controller, select in window, so that main plaque again, no keyword in this instance. The next thing it needs to link to is the activator. So we're going to do select reference in render window and click on its adjacent activator. This will have a keyword, type in CC on your keyboard and then go down and you are going to need the fish plaque activator keyword so kw for keyword let me just double check that so we don't get this wrong yes fish plaque activator click ok and then we're going to need three more links so we'll do new select in window and we're going to do the small one first and you may have already guessed this it's going to be the cc blah 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 fish plaque small fish marker kw and then you're going to just basically go up and up and up with each of them. So you're going to double click on the large one and you're going to do large for that one. So fish plaque, large fish marker, um, KW, and then you're going to do an extra large. So the further out the X marker, it's to support bigger, fatter fishes and CC and then fish plaque X large fish marker, KW, blah, blah, blah. And essentially we now need to do that for every single plaque. So if you are gonna do like 10 plaques, a wall filled with plaques, best of luck. What you could do is you could copy and paste them and then just tweak that property for the aliases and point at the right alias. And in theory, it should copy the links, but you'd have to double check the work on that. Uh, this, in this case, because there's only three plaques, it was a lot easier to do each manually. And then as you may have guessed, I'm just literally gonna go ahead now, click on each of these, uh, oh, hang on. Uh, click on each of these, repeating the process, and then I'll be back with you. Okay, so there we go. I have gone ahead and linked all of those together, all the link refs back and forth between everything. And what we should now have is a system that will work. <laughs> Um, what you need to do now to finalize is get the positioning right on these markers. So make sure that your activators are far enough away from the wall that you can get to activate them and they're not, you know, bumping into collision. Make sure that that 3D data is off ever so slightly if need be, if you experience issues. Otherwise, take each of these and try and position them with the snap to grid off and put them where you think the fish can be placed and sit nicely on the rack. Now, what I found is Bethesda put them about halfway into each other, overlapping each time. And that that's probably what we want to do here. And then obviously go in game, test them out one by one, different fish, and see how you get on with them. 
And then what I'll also do here in a sec is once we've put this together, I would recommend grabbing yourself a test container with all of your fish in that you can then use to throw the different fish on the rack and whatnot. Obviously, it's going to be a bit spoilery if you haven't found all the fish, um, but, you know, modders get spoiled. So what you want to do now is just type in... Ooh, let's just type in container uh, in the filter, and let's get ourselves a test container. I don't think it really matters what it looks like. Uh, we'll just go with the standard chest, go into it, edit the base, give it a unique ID of DF container fish. Uh, if I could type, that would be fantastic. And then we'll call this fish container, or better yet, all the fishies. And then delete what's in there, click OK, create new form of it so we didn't edit whatever that base container was and we've got a, a fresh ID for it. Uh, we'll keep it respawning. And what I now need to do, I'm just going to close that preview window. I'm going to go under Magic and Potion and I'm going to clear out the filter and replace it with fish. And I'm going to take all of the food fish. I believe it's food fish and ingredient fish that can be placed into this thing. So if you look at these, these are the full-on fishies. Um, all except the cooked ones. Maybe I don't need cooked fish. I'm pretty sure you can't add cooked fish on the wall. But don't quote me. If you were to edit the form lists that are linked with this script, you could probably allow it to put cooked fish on the wall. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, and then we also want to account for ingredients. So from my testing, there's, I'm pretty sure it was ingredients. But just in case, you know, this is just a test chest. What works, works. Drag all of those in. Click OK. OK again. I'm just going to go ahead and put this up against the wall somewhere. And then we've got a nice test chest of fish. I've got a COC marker allowing us to spawn in there. Maybe we'll spawn ourselves a little bit closer in and pointing to where we need to be. And because we want to go in and test now, I'm actually going to make sure that this is not initially disabled, otherwise none of this is going to be visible. Um, but then if I had a crafting system, I'd initially disable and then link to enable that. So that links back to what I said earlier on. But otherwise, we should now be very good to go, um, with one exception. You may need to create an SEQ file. Although we don't have any dialogue, if you have any issues with the quest that we've created kicking in at the start of the game... Make yourself an SCQ, and obviously if you release this to the, the Nexus or wherever, uh, make sure that's included in your, your packed BSA as well. If you want to know how to create an SCQ, uh, go ahead and watch the video above there. Uh, that will show you why you need one, how to make one, um, and you, know, you can package that up with your mod. Uh, otherwise, I'm probably going to go ahead and not bother with one here and see if it works. If not, what you can do is just save and then reload the save. So let's dive into the game and let's see if that works. Okay, here we are in game and here are our plaques. And I'm just going to go into this chest, take everything out of it, go up to one of the plaques, activate it and place a fish on there. So I've put angel fish on, it says fish mounted. And as you can see, you can take the fish off. It stays on the plaque, activate it again. We'll do catfish, that goes on. Uh, although I will note that I may have got the placement ever so slightly wrong. Uh, they're quite far off the wall. Uh, so again, you need to do some testing. And another good thing that's happened here, I mean, it's bad, but it's good that it's happened because I can show you what I mean, is because the placement of this activator wasn't quite right and it's it's bumping into the wall collision, I have to really like push into the wall to manage to activate the plaque. And even then, it looks like I'm having a hard time activating that top one. Uh, so I may need to like tweak that data and double check that the player activation flag is ticked. Otherwise, this one also works. You can place the fish on, uh, you can take the fish off. It's pretty cool, um, works like a charm. So if that did not work for you and you're having issues, then just double check your work, even recreate them from scratch. They, they can be a pain to work with because they're so complex and confusing. There are different scripts, there are different links as you've seen. Uh, and also in addition to that, this sort of stuff is just 
known to be a pain in the backside. If you've seen my weapon racks and plaques video, you'll know. If you've messed with weapon racks and such, you'll know that sometimes they interact with collisions of objects weirdly. Uh, they need to be rotated slightly. Trigger boxes don't want to work. They can be very, very, very picky to work with. So be patient with it and it should work for you and it should be okay. Um, but otherwise, that is how you set up the uh, fish plaque system. Okay, so before I let you go, something that I did notice is I had slipped up myself when I went into testing. One of those wasn't working because I hadn't linked up the plaque 01 and activator 01 uh, correctly on the other ones. So match your ones with your ones, your threes with your threes, your twos for your twos. Don't have activator one here with, with spot threes and whatnot. You need to make sure they're linked correctly. It's very, very easy to make a mistake with it. But otherwise, that is just about it for this tutorial video. So I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comments section down below. If you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button and the bell if you want to get notifications for future videos such as this one and maybe some more CC content on how to do other things. Otherwise, that is just about it from me. Thank you all very much for watching and I will speak to you all next time.